Dr. Hashim, thank you so much for this opportunity to interview you. Um, you are the UNIDO Head of the Investment and Technology Promotions Office in Bahrain. Um, could you give us an idea of your career uh, path to date? Sure. Actually, uh, we established this office in 1996 in the Kingdom of Bahrain. And since then, I have the pleasure and the honor to be heading this office uh, over a journey of 25 years. 28 years, you know, to enhance innovation and entrepreneurship out of Bahrain to the world. Um, actually, my background, I studied uh, in France, uh, international law and uh, management of international organization. I did my master and PhD. Then I went to the US. At the same time, I did another doctoral research pro program on international development and conflict management. Then in 1991, I joined uh, UNIDO. I have been uh, missioned to, to the Gulf region to be the first industrial coordinator uh, on, in terms of representation of UNIDO in the Arab Gulf countries. And then we realized that uh, the support which the Gulf countries they need and the Arab countries as a whole is uh, private sector development private sector development to enhance the industrialization effort of the region. This is what led us to, in 1996, to establish uh, the Unido Investment and Technology Promotion Office to be uh, a part of a network of Unido. Unido has eight offices worldwide in Japan, in, in Italy, in Germany, in China, in, uh, in Russia, and, and, and in South Korea. And then, of course, we opened the office in Bahrain. Do the other offices, they mainly mobilize investment from industrialized countries to developing countries, uh, investment in technology transfer, cash investment, and market outlet. Bahrain to being considered as a financial hub in the region, the wisdom of the organization is to establish this office in Bahrain and to be linked to this network to enhance investment, uh, specifically if we're talking about industrialization, we need machinery, we need technology, and we need finance. This is why the reason of establishing the ITPO in the Kingdom of Bahrain. But then we realized after working three, four years that they have a problem worldwide. And this is what came to bring what's called today the Bahrain model, which is being so far in, uh, implemented in more than 54 countries worldwide. Fantastic. Um, Tony, I know that Unido Bahrain has been specifically involved with initiatives supporting youth and women's advancement um, and progression issues. Do you have any particular success stories in this regard you'd like to share with us? Uh, we have plenty. Actually, I will start by Mrs. Huda Janahi, which is uh, the first woman entrepreneur to enter the program of the Bahrain model in 2001. Uh, actually, she has been acknowledged by, uh, you know, uh, President Josh Bush the father in the World Economic Forum of Davos that she is a model for women worldwide, specifically for the Arab region. This is an award by itself for, for, for Bahrain, for uh, His Majesty the King in his initiative in the economic restructuring of Bahrain and mainly he has uh, recommended and actually instructed all ministries in Bahrain to work toward uh, women and youth uh, empowerment and to let them to you know to take the lead of the economic apparatus development of the country and since then you need to uh, through, uh, through the office in Bahrain it went into a strategic partnership with the Kingdom of Bahrain. How do you see industrial growth impacting job creation in Bahrain specifically for locals? Well, of course, Bahrain is, uh, is an open society, it is an open economy, so they also interact with what's happening regionally and globally. It affects the development of Bahrain. We are developing programs and partnership with India, with mainly with the Confederation of Indian Industries. With China, we're having a big program with uh, Shenzhen, um, municipality and Shenzhen International Youth Organization and very soon we're going to develop and launch a big project here in Bahrain to support partnership between Bahraini and Chinese entrepreneurs from Shenzhen. This will help us a lot 
to convert most of the industries here in Bahrain through uh, to be in line of what we call smart manufacturing, the existing ones and also the future ones. And this will allow also the integration and partnership between a lot of Bahraini entrepreneurs and Chinese entrepreneurs, then Indian entrepreneurs, then also work or working now maybe by December to develop a program with Turkey on, on mainly on technology development. Thank you. Ravash, what do you see as the most pressing challenges for small and medium enterprises in Bahrain and how does uh, UNIDO help them to address those challenges? As I said, you know, Bahrain uh, always uh, being vibrant to work on, on, on the region and to work globally. Uh, well, we have a lot of innovation, we have a very vivid and dynamic youth, entrepreneurs. Okay. We have to support them. Of course, startup, startup is, 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 has an excellent ecosystem in Bahrain, but still we have to work a lot on growth and sustainability of small and medium. And this will lead us to, to look into two, two very important aspects and element, mainly on how we work in converting with most of our small and medium enterprises to be uh, smart, you know, to look into artificial intelligence, to look into digitalization. The other thing, how to make sure to, because of the size of the market of Bahrain, how they can project, you know, <clears throat> to market their products and services regionally and, and beyond. This is why also we look into different sectors as now today we are focusing on the creative and the orange economy as a very important sector and this is one of the fastest growing sectors worldwide. It's all about talent and innovation. And this is why when you look into Bahraini youth, they are very talented. So this is why we are engaging, I just came from, from Paris where uh, I was invited by the Institut du Monde Arab, uh, which is the, uh, it's a very prestigious institute for the Arab countries, but it's based in, 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 in Paris, and was attending the Arab Designers uh, Business Plan Competition, okay? And uh, there are a lot of programs we're going to work with them, especially in the Arab region, how to enhance uh, innovation and how to enhance art and artificial intelligence, you know? So this is all coming back to Bahrain when we work into that. Um, for example, also in November, uh, end of November, we're uh, going to attend the eighth uh, International Youth and Innovation Organization of Shenzhen in China, where we discuss different topics related to, mainly I will focus again on artificial intelligence and the orange economy, and then of course also the blue economy and the green economy. As you see what we do, we look into what's happening globally and how this could benefit Bahrain, of course, and the region. Fantastic. Um, as a global leader in the promotion of investment and technology, what emerging industries in this regard do you think are applicable and have got potential in Bahrain for future economic development? Well, uh, as I said, again, in Bahrain, uh, uh, you know, to look at if we look into the sustainable development goals, in one way, it is a UN broader uh, vision. And then when we look in the, 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 the fast growing economies worldwide, you know, how this is affect the uh, economic development of Bahrain, uh, well, we have two things. You have the, the, the human part of it, which is also a very important part of the uh, uh, SDGs, because SDGs is on five Ps. The main P is people, then you have planet, uh, you have partnership, and so on. Um, so, the main challenge for Bahrain now is how to go through this international trend of digitalization, artificial intelligence, smart manufacturing. Because this means that it has to go back to education to make sure that education matches you know the demand in the labor market and even the labor market has to go with what's happening internationally so it means innovation artificial intelligence digitalization is the how Bahrain will tackle that it will uh, it will be one of the most important 
conditions and elements for Bahrain economic development. And this is happening, as I said, in Bahrain. We are playing a major role in, in doing this, working with the people, with the entrepreneurs, but working with the government, different line ministers, working with the NGOs, and to see it worldwide what's happening uh, through exhibitions, through conferences, through engagement and partnership. As I say, for example, in India with the Confederation of Indian Industries, <laughs> with China, different bodies, but mainly the International Youth and Innovation Organization, with GOSCAP in Turkey, with, with the SME Development Fund uh, of Turkey, uh, with uh, even in the region, uh, with Egypt, with Morocco, uh, also working with, um, with France, with the US. Also now we're developing a program through the Arab Union of Chambers, through the Arab American Chamber, to develop and enhance a program between Arab and American entrepreneurs. And actually it will, uh, we are going to kick off the program early next year. We're going to have an yearly event and activities uh, in 28th of this month in Cairo, uh, we are having a program for uh, uh, incubators and incubation from the U.S. and how they can boost uh, entrepreneurship for these American incubators in, in the main, in main region. So, as you see, also we are uh, going to develop a program in Latin America uh, with the uh, Brazilian Arab uh, Chamber, which is based in, in, in Brazil. So. We work with different entities, with different partners, you know, at the, at the national level, at the regional, at the global level to enhance uh, entrepreneurship, uh, digitalization, artificial intelligence, and, and so on. Dr. Hashim, is there anything else that you think entrepreneurs in Bahrain uh, should know about UNIDO and what it can do uh, in, in the aid of uh, helping development? Well, you know, our, our door is always open, so any potential entrepreneur, and of course also entrepreneur, the existing enterprise, they can interact with us, we can support them to start their businesses, which we work with all the ecosystem together, and uh, we will help also in the growth and the sustainability. Also, we are having a very unique and special program with the Minister of Education through what's called the School Olympics for Innovation and Entrepreneurship to Achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. Actually, we, we developed the first curriculum for entrepreneurship in Bahrain and the first in the region uh, in 2006, you know. Then this, this, this curriculum has been evolved and has been enhanced. We, we have more than 460 certified uh, school teachers on the Bahrain model, which we train them, then we certify them. And then the credit hours, it is being acknowledged and certified by the Ministry of Education. So today we have more than, I would say, something around 70 schools, of secondary schools, private and public, they are part of that program. So during the year, the, 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 the students, they develop uh, uh, a project idea, but the project idea is a solution for one of the challenges of the SDGs. So we are making the students to think out of the box and to look globally what's happening, but it's all, all coming from Bahrain. And then we have the, the ecosystem, like Tamkin, like the Bahrain Development Bank, the Supreme Council of Environment, Supreme Council of Women, the Ministry of uh, Industry and Commerce and others. They are part of the program, which they, they go to the schools, they explain the ecosystem in Bahrain. So this is to enhance the mindset of the future generation that they can start uh, a, a business, they can be innovative in whatever domain they will work. And it allows them to know what is happening in Bahrain. At the end of the year, we have the, um, we have the final competition, we have a jury, which comes from the private sector, from entrepreneurs, from universities, from, from the Minister of Education itself. And on the 18th of this month, with the presence of the Minister of Education, we're going to have the finals, we're going to have an exhibition to award the best 10 schools. And then of course, to award the three best finals with their projects.
It's going to be on 18th of, of December. And actually, we are putting even this festivity, this, this festival, under the, the Silver Jubilee of His Royal Majesty King Hamad because it's all stemmed and came from that vision of the economic restructuring of Bahrain with education was part of it, but education allow us uh, to, to enhance innovation uh, and this will enhance youth and women in power. So the whole celebration is also part of the celebration of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty King Hamad. Dr. Hashim, thank you so much for your time. Uh, been a fascinating interview uh, and insight into how UNIDA was helping Bahrain develop for, for the future.